The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, this is Jennifer Schaus, and welcome to our third week of government contracting webinars. Today we are joined by John Williams, who's going to cover the Mentor-Protege program, which is a popular topic for government contractors, uh, and we will dig into his presentation in just a moment. Uh, we have just added an eighth week of webinars. Uh, we started out with seven, but uh, we had some demand for some additional topics, so the eighth week schedule will be up uh, by close of business today on our website. All of the webinars are complimentary. They're also recorded, and if you go to our website under the webinar section, you'll find all of the recordings um, segmented by topic. Uh, a little bit about us, we are based in downtown Washington, D.C., and provide various services for federal contractors, domestic, foreign companies, uh, product companies, as well as services. And our offering, uh, our offerings range from capability statements, proposal writing, 8A certification, GSA schedules, uh, and additional services uh, related to contracting. Uh, throughout the year, we host networking events and and seminars, uh, you can find us on our website under the events section, or you can sign up for our newsletter, which is complimentary, and that'll keep you abreast of everything that we are doing, um, past, present, and future. Uh, a little bit about me on this slide, uh, but more importantly, I'd rather dig into uh, some information about John, uh, the law firm that he works for, and his topic on the mentor protege program. So thanks, everybody, for joining us, and thanks, John, for uh, sharing your time with us today and your knowledge and expertise on the mentor protege program. You're welcome, Jennifer. Thanks uh, for having me. It's great to be here. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Williams. I'm a partner with Polero Mazza. Uh, I have 15 years, actually at this point, sorry to say, it's more than 15 years of experience uh, working with government contractors. Uh, and you've got my contact information here. Most of that time I've spent with Polero Mazza. Uh, and you can flip to the next slide, which is a full-service law firm. We're in D.C. We have roughly 25 lawyers, and most of us are doing government contracting you know, soup to nuts on a day-to-day -day basis. We also handle corporate issues and labor and employment and litigation. But our, our bread and butter is helping contractors navigate the complicated maze of doing business with the federal government. And one of the most popular topics that we've been talking with contractors about recently is SBA's new mentor protege program. So we're, we're gonna run through a high level overview of that program today. And then I'd be happy to take your questions via email afterwards. Um, and anything I didn't cover if you'd like more information. So this new program, it's still relatively new, but it's about a year old at this point. So we're coming up on the first anniversary of when the rules went into effect last August. Uh, and then the program started taking applications in October, but really not in earnest until November 2016, when the online application was up and running at www.certify.sba.gov. Very positive statistics so far for this program. As of last month, there are over 200 approved mentor protege applications and very few denials. I, I think just a handful, and none of the companies that we've worked with have been denied, so it's, it's relatively rare. Uh, and you can, if you follow this link at the bottom of the slide here, you can see a list of all of the currently approved uh, mentor protege relationships. Benefits of being in a mentor-protege relationship are many. Uh, the, for the protege, you can receive various forms of assistance from your mentor, which includes financial assistance, technical assistance, management assistance, help with proposal writing, uh, help with HR issues, developing an employee handbook, I and mean, really whatever it is that the protege needs and the mentor is willing to provide, this program will uh, allow for it. Uh, the, the, there's an expectation that the mentor and protege will enter into some contract arrangement together, so they'll go after work and prime sub relationships. And there is also a special rule, which is the, the next slide here, that allows the mentor and the protege to, um, excuse me, Jennifer, I meant the next bullet, uh, that allows for the, the mentor and the protege to enter into a joint venture together. 
And uh, you, in the federal space, if you're going after small business contracts, you can't do a joint venture with a large business unless you have a mentor-protege relationship. So this is the only way to get a large business into a joint venture for any type of small business project. You have to have mentor protege. So that's a real killer application of this program. If, if you get into the mentor protege, you can then go after joint ventures with your mentor, your large business mentor. The mentor could also own up to 40% of the protege through this program. And we may start to see evaluation and contracting incentives to offerors that are utilizing a mentor protege team, but that's been relatively rare to this point. Okay, we can go to the next slide, thank you. So how do you qualify as a protege? The good news is they've made it pretty simple. You just need to be a small business in your primary NAICS code. So if your primary NAICS code has a $27.5 million size standard and your last three years of revenues average less than 27 and a half million, you are eligible to be a protege. You could also qualify in a secondary industry as long as you're small in that secondary NAICS code. You have to be able to demonstrate to SBA that you have prior experience in that secondary industry and it's sort of a logical progression of your business that you're moving from your primary to a secondary code. But you can do it. So this is this would help you if you happen to be large in your primary code, but you have a secondary code that you're still small and you, you would still be eligible to be a protege. Really important to keep in mind the next two bullets here that you generally can only have one mentor at a time. It's possible that you could be approved to have two mentors at one time, uh, but it would take a, a special showing. But the last bullet, really the key here, you can only ever have two SBA mentor-protege relationships. So you have to, when you're the protege, you have to choose very carefully who you want to get into the mentoring relationship with because you only get two bites at the apple. And as a mentor, it's also fairly simple to qualify. Uh, you have to be capable of providing mentoring and you have to have good character which means you're not suspended or debarred. Uh, the mentor can be a large or a small business. A company could be both a mentor and a protege at the same time. Uh, uh, nonprofits though, for whatever reason, SBA decided that they were required under the law to not allow nonprofits to be mentors. I, I don't know that that was correct, but that, that was their conclusion. So. You can't have a nonprofit as a mentor, but otherwise it's pretty uh, low bar to qualifying as a mentor. And a mentor can only have generally one protege at a time, but they could have up to three proteges at a time, as long as the mentor can demonstrate that, that their proteges are not gonna be competitors of each other and that they're able to mentor all of the firms uh, separately. So especially if you're talking to a large business, you know, they, a very large business, they may have multiple proteges. And it's, it's possible to make that work, but you have to make a special showing. And unlike the protege, which can only have two mentors ever, the mentor can have as many proteges as it wants in its lifetime. It just can't have more than three at one time, but other, otherwise it's not limited. So the participation period for the Mentor-Protege program is a maximum of six years, but it's, it's split into two three-year terms. So the initial term is for three years, and then there's an option to extend it for an additional three years. But really, it's, it's frankly a month-to-month -month arrangement. At SBA wants the parties to commit to at least 12 months. But the template mentor-protege agreement says that from SBA, which they require you to use this template mentor-protege agreement, it says that either party can terminate the arrangement on 30 days notice. So whether it's a minimum 12 months, you know, but I really think it's, it's essentially a month-to-month -month arrangement. And you can go to the next slide. 
The applications, like I mentioned earlier, really took off in November of last year when SBA opened their online application portal, and that's certified.sba.gov. It's the only way to apply, so when you're ready, you're going to do it online. Uh, it's currently open for anyone to apply, uh, and what that means is that the, it's, it's fully open right now. The SBA said they might have to go with open and closed application periods if they just get too slammed with applications, but that hasn't happened so far. The, it's been good news. Like, like I said, they're processing them very quickly. By government standards, you know, it's eight to 12 business days is amazing. And I, I've seen that consistent from the first applications that we helped clients with last fall all the way through earlier this summer. We're, we're doing several a month, and all of them have been consistent in this eight to 12 business day range. So to, to apply, it's pretty straightforward. Again, by government standards, they've really made this simple, which is great. That's why this program is so exciting and so many people are interested in it. You have to register with SAM. You have to prepare a mentor-protege agreement, and the SBA, we'll get into this in a little bit, but the SBA has a template for that, so they make that pretty easy. You do the online application. There's an online training that the mentor and the protege have to complete. I haven't taken the training, but I haven't had any clients complain about it. So my, my guess is it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the protege should have a business plan because the business plan is what allows you to demonstrate to SBA how the mentor is going to assist the protege in fulfilling its business plan. So the business plan is sort of the baseline for the relationship. Uh, so you're going to need that. And then if you are applying under a secondary makes code, like I mentioned earlier, you're, you're going to have to provide SBA some documentation to show that that's an, that's an industry that you are operating in. But that's really it. That's pretty straightforward. The, the mentor-protege agreement is the real heart of the application. This is where you're going to spend most of your time. I've given you the link here to find the template agreement on SBA's website. It's not a total plug and play. You're gonna to have to get into the template and customize it a little bit. And, and what you're really gonna spend your time customizing is what assistance does the protege need? Why, why are you entering into this relationship? Where, what areas are, are the protege lacking? And what is the mentor able to do to help the protege meet those needs? And the SBA wants you to provide a timeline for the assistance the mentor is going to provide, as well as metrics for how the parties will measure success. You know, really, in a sense, it's, it's doing the SBA's job for them, because the SBA is supposed to be analyzing these arrangements on an annual basis to determine if they should continue. And so they're going to let them continue or not based on whether it's a success. So it's, you know, it's important in the agreement to show SBA realistic ways that you'll measure success so that they will agree that the relationship is a success and should continue. And that's why you want to tie it to the protege's business plan so you can really show how the protege is benefiting from the relationship. And that's a good segue because, as I just mentioned, SBA will evaluate the relationship on an annual basis and decide whether it should be continued. And this is going to be aided by reporting that the protege has to submit to the SBA. So the, the protege will report on the progress of the relationship and SBA will evaluate it and decide whether it should continue. Now, SBA, prior to this new mentor protege program, they had for many years an 8A mentor protege program. Um, and it was only available for 8A firms. This new mentor protege program is open to all small businesses. Um, in the 8A program, they essentially stopped reviewing mentor protege relationships on an annual basis because it was just too burdensome for SBA. So they, they said, essentially, you don't have to worry about annual approvals from us. Unless you hear otherwise, you should just assume your relationship is still uh, good. So I, I wonder if they may go that route with this program too, because now this is open to all small businesses. Um, you know, they may not be able to, they may not have the bandwidth at SBA to review each of them on an annual basis. 
the when the SBA issued the rules last August, they said that uh, if federal agencies that have their own mentor protege programs want to continue those programs, they need to report back to SBA within one year and explain how they're going to continue their separate programs and it's not going to be duplicative of SBA's program. And basically, they need to make a case for why their program should continue now that we have this SBA program for all small businesses. I think SBA really, and, and Congress is the one that directed SBA to create this new mentor project program for all small businesses. And I think the, the feeling is by Congress and SBA that this program is the government-wide mentor protege program. It's open to every type of small business, uh, women-owned, hub-zone, SDVOSB, et cetera. And it applies for work at all federal agencies. So why do we need any other mentor protege programs? Well, some agencies may feel like they, notwithstanding all that, they do want to continue their own mentor protege program. And they can, as long as they report back to SBA, and this is the month, August 2017. So we should see in the next you know, month or two, maybe uh, which federal mentor protege programs are gonna continue. We know that DOD's program will not be affected because DOD's mentor protege program is authorized by a statute. So it's not impacted by this, but other, federal agencies that have just created their own mentoring programs, but were not authorized by statute, we're going to have to wait and see what happens to those programs. And it's, it's right around now that we're going to find out. And that brings us um, to the end. Great information and a lot of benefits here for small businesses, John. Uh, as far as the, uh, the new program, uh, the quick turnaround time for uh, the government, that's huge, and, uh, and the high acceptance rate. So thanks for sharing all that information with us. Uh, John's information is here. You can contact him directly if you have any questions. Uh, obviously, his firm is well-versed in helping uh, small businesses and companies with the Mentor Protégé program. So please feel free, feel free to reach out to him. Uh, a copy of this recording will be available later today on our website. And thanks again, everybody, for joining us. And thanks again, John. Thank you, Jennifer. Bye-bye.